Good evening, YouTube pipe smokers and the YTPC. Southern Piper here. <clears throat> and I hope everyone is having a good weekend. Good Sunday evening. I have had a busy day. Uh, Sunday, got up and went to church this morning. Well, before I did that, I shared my ninth day of Christmas with you guys. Um, but something was weighing on my heart, and I wanted to do a video. So, last week, I believe it was, high school associate acquaintance friend did a meme or put a meme on Facebook about how non-believers try to dismiss a lot of Christian uh, particularly around this time of year um, beliefs saying, you know, well, oh, it's all rooted in paganism. And, and it was, you know, a drawing of someone decrying, you know, a given tradition. And then on the other side, it was a picture of a saint uh, saying, dispelling what they were trying to say. Um, for instance, one of the little panels was someone saying, oh, the Christmas tree is a pagan tradition. And on the other side of that was a drawing of St. Boniface holding a tree. So, I read it you know, kind of scrolled by it. And then last night, a lady friend and I were talking, and I really don't remember exactly what was said, but it was something along the lines of Christmas tree and it being in the Bible. So, being the studious person I am, instead of paying attention to the sermon in church today, I researched the history of the Christmas tree. Now, I don't want to talk about that. This is not going to be very extensive. I'm going to probably put a couple of links to my resources in the description. <laughs> And I am absolutely sure that someone's going to happen across upon this video and say, oh, you're leaving something out. Or, oh, you forgot about this. And you're absolutely right. I probably did forget about it because I have done this research in a matter of an hour and a half, two hours. Um, but I felt compelled. I just wanted to, to do the video. Um, if really for no other reason, my own edification and, and learning. Um, and then, you know, maybe share it with somebody who may see this and, and learn a little something. It, they may go, one of you may go and research even more. So that's the purpose, and I apologize to hit the microphone. So, before I get into St. Boniface, we'll do a little housekeeping. I am smoking some Christmas cookie in my Savinelli 2021 St. Nicholas 
You've seen this pipe before. And I don't remember the model number because I have a poor memory. It's full, it's 602. And since we're going to be talking about the origins of the Christmas tree, I'm sitting where you can see my Christmas tree in the background, and I'm drinking out of a coffee mug with a Christmas tree on it. Which, if you'll remember from a previous video, that was uh, in a set that my grandmother gave me. Well, gave to me and my wife when I was married. Uh, I believe that was a wedding gift. Or like a first Christmas gift or whatever. So, And side note, uh, we had fa uh, my family, my parents, um, sister and her family and uh, lady friend were here earlier today for um, doing our family Christmas together. So we we ate on those, and it was very uh, it was very nice, very good time. Um, I wore uh, I wore my Christmas vest in honor of my granddad, who always wore one, and um, so I try to I try to wear it on any family Christmas occasion to honor him. But we had a we had a lovely time. Alright. So I think I've got all the housekeeping out of the way. Um mm, Tamper. My favorite. Drum Santa by uh Larry Blackett. Buttons for your britches. All right, so let's get into this. I don't have a ton of material. Like I said, I I, I really did this. Most of it was uh, sitting in church, and then a little bit this evening, um, just taking a few notes. So it's gonna be, it's not gonna be very in depth. Um, just kind of hitting some highlights. Um, and if, if I, things I have left out, um, if you can add to that by making comments, uh, in, you know, down below in the comment section, please do. Um, you know, you've heard me say before, uh, two heads better than one. Um, you know, so it, it, let's add to this, uh, for the things I leave out. Um, and so... And I'll tell you, most of the articles I found were from a couple of different places. One was a BBC um, website, and then I found a couple of uh, articles on some Catholic church websites. Um, and so that's where this is coming from. So... Uh, St. Boniface, and I'm going to try to find a picture that won't get me in trouble for using uh, to use as the as the uh, you know the cover image for the video. Um, but St. Boniface was a missionary in Germany in the eighth century. Um, he was from England and had joined a Benedictine uh, monastery and had been sent as a missionary to what is now Germany. Um, and sometime around 
came across a group of pagans worshipping an oak tree. Now the oak, which they called a thunder oak, was a symbol of Thor. And the pagans would, on the winter solstice, which of course we all know is, actually it's coming up, it's, it's in a couple of days, uh, December 21st into the 22nd, they would make a human sacrifice under this oak tree. Um, and I did see one reference where they would actually, and it would be an infant, and they would actually bash it with a hammer, which is unthinkable, to be quite honest. Uh, awful, awful and inhumane. Um, and I did find quotes, and, you know, obviously, I, I don't know that someone was sitting there with, you know, quill and parchment, you know, documenting this. So I don't know if it's an actual direct quote or if it's a quote that is part of uh, legend. Uh, I would I would go with the latter, um, that it was a quote just through legend. But uh, Frank Boniface was quoted as saying, here is the Thunder Oak, and here the cross of Christ shall break the hammer of the false god Thor. And with that, he proceeded to take an axe and chop down the Thunder Oak. Now, you know, if you think about it, he was, he was truly risking his life doing this. Um, because uh, the, you know, the, the pagans absolutely, because he and his men were outnumbered, could absolutely have just, uh, you know, probably annihilated him. But here he is, in the name of God, in the name of Christ, chopping down this tree, and nothing happened to him. Thor didn't strike them down with his mighty hammer. Thor didn't, you know, have a clap of thunder or a bolt of lightning to strike him down. They, they, were, they were left there. They remained standing. And so... St. Boniface preached and talked about no more human sacrifice, that Christ has sacrificed himself and shed his blood so that no more sacrifice needs to happen. Now, one article I read said beyond the uh, where the tree, where the oak tree had been felled, there was a small spruce, and that Saint Boniface directed uh, these newly, you know, conformed Christians drew their attention to the to the fir tree, and said, "Use this as an example." Other articles I said. Um, uh, or, or other articles I came across, uh, you know, said that the history of the legend is confusing, that uh, some say he just referenced it and uh, one spontaneously grew where the oak tree had been. Um, so, it, it, you know, obviously the point is um, St. Boniface referenced a fir tree um, whether it was one that was currently standing or growing or whether it was one that spontaneously came up. Point is, he referenced them to um, a fir tree, uh, the fact that it's evergreen, so the, it's you know, the everlasting love, it never, uh, never fades, similar to God's love, uh, and that it points to heaven, um, and that he said, Instead of uh, 
you know, coming out into the woods, take a fir tree into your home and celebrate the birth of Christ who came to die for your sins with your family and friends in your home. Um, and it also said that on that very evening um, that many of the pagans were converted and baptized the very night. Um, and then the following year uh, began decorating fir trees in their home every winter. Um, which is interesting, uh, you know, because I can see where there's confusion. You know, if this is true, I can see where there would be confusion of it's a pagan tradition. Well, it's a pagan tradition. The oak tree is the pagan tradition. And it became a tra- uh, German tradition, really, uh, by these newly converted Christians through St. Boniface's uh, actions. So, the tradition obviously grew in Germany. So fast forward, literally a thousand years. Um, I'm struggling with my pipe here because I'm talking too much. Um, So fast forward, uh, the first record of a tree being displayed in the United States was in the 1830s by German settlers in Pennsylvania. Now, as so many of us like to do, if something's different than what we uh, value or do, you know, we have to say it's bad and evil. Um, And so Germans were, uh, this is Stanley, by the way. Say hi, Stanley. That's Stanley. Um, He is... uh, He's not quite two, um, and he's a dachshund. But, uh, you know, a lot of settlers uh, in the early part of the United States, before we were a country, uh, you know, they decried. They, you know, they, they viewed Christmas trees as pagan, and, you know, we're not going to have that. And so... Uh, they certainly didn't want it around. And so um, Christmas trees in general didn't grow in popularity until uh, in 1846, Queen Victoria and her German prince, Prince Albert, should have, should have had some Prince Albert to smoke tonight, but I don't have any. Uh, they were sketched in an issue of Illustrated London News with their children around a Christmas tree. And, um, you know, I guess the popularity of the royal family dates back, you know, generations, centuries. And so when that picture got out, uh, you know, it it started growing. The thought of having a Christmas tree, popularity grew. um, And then, of course, that migrated to the U.S., and by the 1890s, the popularity was on the rise in the U.S. Um, and really, you know, the, the rest is kind of history. Um, and, you know, now, uh, I mean, it's, it's just a part. I mean, there are people who are not even Christians who put up Christi- Christmas trees because it's more, you know, just uh, the U.S. culture now and, and probably in most uh, Western nations, uh, I would imagine that there are people who don't go to church, don't, may not even believe in, in Christ or, or God, and, and they put up a Christmas tree just because, you know, it, it culturally. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, a uh, guy I worked with, uh, we were in the same flight together. Um, he was Muslim, and he put up a Christmas tree every year, and 
Santa Claus came to see his son every year, uh, and he says, yeah, why, why wouldn't I do that? I, I'm Muslim, but I live in America, and my kid sees Christmas trees, and he wants toys too, so why not? And so I, I imagine there are people who, who use the custom just out of, of a cultural uh, standpoint. Um, but anyway, that's a little bit of research I did, wanted to share. Um, you know, I would encourage you to, to go out and do your own research, learn more than what I've, a little bit I've done here. Uh, if, if there are other, uh, you know, facts or pieces, you know, obviously I left huge gaps um, in this, you know, 20 plus minute video. Uh, you know, feel free to put in the comments, add to this. Um, but thought it was interesting, thought it would be timely, um, and really thought it'd be cool to share a pipe with the community and talk about Christmas traditions. So uh, I am going to end this and hop over to uh, the Spurgeon Piper is doing a live tonight. So I'm going to hop over and watch him. And um, I'm going to bid you all happy smoking and blessings to you and your family.